All right, we'll call this meeting of the Tangerville Parish School Board to order this October 15, 2024. If you would please call the roll. Ms. Richards. Right Mr. Toller. Ms. Abrams. Here. Mr. Westmoreland. Present. Mr. Duncan. Here. Mr. Anthony. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Piazza. Here. Ms. Dominguez. Present. All right, if you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tom's doing the patriotic song tonight. Can we zoom, right. Tom? Yeah. yeah, zoom. First item on the agenda is to consider approval of our board minutes from our October 1st, 2024 meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So move. Second. Motion, second. Motion is made by Mr. Westmoreland, second admits by Mr. Piazza. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, we'll call the question and ask members to vote your devices. Voting is open. Yes. I'm not getting nothing's coming through. Up oh, here it is. Here it is. Oh, I got it. Okay. Came Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Our right, next item on the agenda is to recognize this month's recipient of the Enos Jake Bailey uh, Above and Beyond Award. I believe Dr. Fusell is going to handle that for us. And um, thank you for having this award. Uh, this, to me, we are blessed in Tangeville Parish School System. We have so many employees who really do go above and beyond. And I know it's hard to, to recognize everyone, but when we were wrapping up our ESSER funding, it's, it's coming to an end. And I, I know Mr. McNeely has mentioned it, Ms. Stilley, Mr. It, everyone at some point at a board meeting has said, you know, thank you to C.C. Lanier. But when I think about all the work C.C. Lanier, and I know, look, she's got her team, because C.C.'s gonna tell you it's the whole team. And it is, but I'm gonna share this. I'm gonna share this little tidbit about C.C. Lanier. One of my blessings is I work directly with um, C.C. as the federal programs supervisor. There's money that flows through federal programs um, from for Title I, Title II, Title IV, title, there's title money that flows through that CC and her team are responsible for making sure is appropriately spent on students and aligned to plans. And, you know, principals love CC. They love her. They're going to call her. CC's going to make sure things are done right, but she's going to help you figure it out. But when you talk about ESSER funding, when we, when we were shut down and COVID happened, and then everybody started, you know, okay, there's money that's going to come to help reopen the schools, to help with all, we didn't, we didn't know how much. I could still remember being at home. We, no, I think we were Zooming all day. It was like just Zoom, 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 trying to figure out reopening the schools. What do we need to do? It was a scary time. No one really knew. We were still like, what is this? What's, what's this going to be like? And, you know, CC, we, would, we'd get an email that says there's going to be a meeting on this. CC would get on those calls and listen, and she would she would be very visionary into what we could do with the funding that was coming. So we might be thinking about like our virtual program, that, that curriculum. We would start to think, how can we make this work? And then to us, it was we need it. And then CC would talk to. And by the way, um, when CC calls LDOE, they take her call because she's usually finding something that they didn't know was a problem yet that once she tells them they're able to fix it before everybody else realizes it so it's a it's a <laughs> blessing for us but ldoe they take cc lanier's calls and cc would say all right lisa y'all want to do this but this this and this has to happen and then she would make sure the process was correct and the flow and her team i think and cc can correct me but I mean, we added a few people 
but we didn't bring in like some districts brought in whole other departments to run ESSER funding because to you know in, in Miss Stilly we had a team who would meet who would talk about what are we going to do with these funds and it was very important that every penny that Tangemo Parish school system received not only stayed here because there were times they would take it back if it wasn't being spent they give us timelines that was spent here and then it was used in a way that would benefit us for a long time to come those things that that alone that didn't just happen with the executive team the board um anyone that was that was cc's team but cc who will, who would never want this kind of recognition i will tell you when she would call or email or whatever she'd always say i want to make sure tasteful parish school system is getting everything that it needs and we're not leaving a penny on the table i mean not one red cent if she could figure it out so i just wanted us to take a moment and ask cc lanier to come forward even though i know if you want your whole team i know cc i already knew um i would like you to come forward because as esser ends i, I think it's important to recognize that unless something changed i don't think one red cent was left on the table uh, to go back. Not one penny, and any penny they offer after that, CC writes and finds. So, CC, if you would come forward so we could recognize you. Can I ask Ms. Philly and Brett Duncan, Mr. Duncan, to come down? going to skip uh, over the financial updates for just a second um, and also skip over committee reports we're going to go to board actions 5a which is to discuss and consider approval of the constituent services contract between national public opinion LLC and tangible parish school system mr. Anthony you wanted to present that for us uh, sure I'm a little rusty because it's been a while since we had our presentation and I've, I've talked to a few of the members just to recap but as a reminder this is a, a constituent services application that would be on your cell phone and what it does is uh, well, I think one of the quickest tools number one if somebody calls you you'll be able to determine whether or not that person is in your district of course I know we want to help and please everyone but sometimes it's best if we focus on our constituents individually um, in addition to that you will be able to record on your device uh, what the person's problem is, um, what's the resolution, has it been resolved. You can check back in in a month to see you know, if the progress has stopped. Um, so basically, it's a secretary that will be in your pocket, on your cell phone, at your fingertips at all time. Um, I'm not twisting anybody's arm to support it, but I will say that I have used it, and I found myself using it uh, very often very frequently and it was very um, it was an important tool when I was running for office so I'm assuming this this software will also be important to make sure we're dealing with our constituents and taking care of them 
So I would encourage uh, support for it, but it's certainly your own decision. All right, so is there a motion to adopt the contract made by Mr. Anthony? Is there a second? Motion to adopt or second. Whatever. Seconded by Mr. Westmoreland. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Mr. Anthony, so will there be training on yes. the app? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Lachardi, who, who is a developer of the app, will come give us an individual training session, I would assume, either right before or right after a meeting once this is approved. Yes. Okay. He also has a video uh, that we can individually go back and do some training on. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions from the board? Any other discussion? I don't have any public input request on this particular action item, so we'll call the question and ask members to vote your devices. Voting is open. He's trying Mr. to Moore. plug in. <laughs> oh, they're waiting on you, Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore, they're waiting on you. <clears throat> Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Thank you. All right, we'll go. Um, we'll finish out board actions. Um, I think we have to consider approval of the low bid for the Independence Leadership Academy roof replacement project by Severdeen Construction Inc. in the amount of one hundred and forty-four thousand five hundred eighty-six dollars and fourteen cents. The administration is also recommending that we approve alternate number one in the amount of $11,500. Mr. Valaruda, any additional information on that? No additional information. It's a long time coming and we're finally here. And we have uh, you presented us with the bid sheets yes. showing the lowest bid and, and all of that. Is any members of the board? Uh, well, first, is there a motion to adopt the administration's recommendation? I make a motion. Motion is made by Ms. Abrams, yes. seconded by Mrs. Richards. Any questions from the board for Mr. Valaruda? Yeah, Mr. Valaruda, I do have one. I know we're now, we're doing this roof. I know it's long overdue. Where, where are we on the parent roof? Anytime I see a roof project, I want to make sure I'm asking, where are we on the parent roof? We're now four <laughs> years in. And I keep getting the same answer. I've spoken with architects. I've spoken with us here at the office. Where can we please give an update on the parent roof? So we have 100% documents, and we're, we're getting ready. We're, we're on the cusp of uh, advertising for it. So it has been approved. The, the architects have sent their stuff in. We've approved that. The architects have to create, they have to update their 100% documents, and then we'll be able to put it on the street. Okay, because I'm getting word that they've done that, and they're waiting on us. They're not waiting on us. Okay. Well, I, like I said, because we're now four years on this project, and we're moving on, and we're getting roofs for other buildings, when that one is probably in the worst shape in the whole parish. Well, had the insurance company and FEMA not missed it, you probably had a roof on it already, Mr. Piano. Well, if, if we, we mark stuff as emergencies, it could be fixed right now. We have the money in the budget to do it now. We've been waiting on architects and contracts and this and that. Meanwhile, I have kids sitting with mold and water in the building. So, no, I, I don't agree with whether it had been missed or not. That's beyond the scope. We haven't done that yet. And I think that's very insulting to the people that go to that building every day and have to teach in the rooms. Any questions about the independence project? All right. No other discussion, no other public input on this particular motion. We'll call the question and ask members to vote your devices. Voting is open.
Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Thank you. All right, next we'll go back up to financial updates. Members should have received um, this month's uh, accounts payable check register from for the period between August 16th uh, and September the 15th. Uh, the total expenditures during that time period being $26,719,656. Do any members have questions from Mr. McNeely uh, regarding that information? All right, hearing none, there's no additional, uh, there's no action on that item. We'll move on to an update on our sales tax, Mr. McNeely. Uh, there should be a chart. Um, the tab. So the EFID is the half penny. Um, so far for the year, uh, it's down about 1.64%, um, which is okay. I mean, we're looking at what the economy's doing because uh, the other thing is, if you look at the other chart with the other sales tax, um, it's actually up slightly. Uh, most of that is because uh, there's some things that are excluded from the EFID tax that are not excluded from the, the full penny taxes. So um, I'm okay with where sales tax is. It looks like our economy is continuing strong. If you remember a couple of years ago, I told you we might be on a bubble that may crash, or it may be something that establishes and kind of keeps going. It looks like it's kind of established and, and kept going. Um, so we will just see what the economy brings in the, in the next uh, six to nine months. Yeah. In addition to the economy, I would encourage board members to pay close attention to the upcoming special legislative session that uh, Governor Landry is likely to call. There'll be some possible significant changes to the sales tax rules and other tax consequences that will possibly impact next year's budget for our school system. Thank you for bringing that up. The, the main one is there's a discussion of eliminating sales tax on manufacturing equipment. That is a that is a huge huge number for local uh, local governments. Mm -hmm. uh, when you see, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do with forklifts, what they're going to do with you know equipment that operates in these places that they have to they pay sales tax currently on. Right. Um, so yeah, they're, they're talking about a lot of changes. That some where they would eliminate our ability to tax some things, but then add other things and you know there's going to be a lot of changes there they're also looking at paying down the unfunded um retirement liability which might would free up some yes. money in our budget it's a yes um, for that. you know uh, and then making the uh the teacher stipend permanent but it's going to be a big session and it's all going to happen very very fast so we're just going to all have to pay very close attention and make sure that we're talking to our friends in the legislature as they go through that so. Uh, the fourth tab, if you click on that. And then, as I said, the sales tax, uh, two cents sales tax is actually up 1.1%. So we're, we're pretty solid on both taxes. So I just want to keep y'all updated uh, each month on those as we receive them. Any questions or comments from the board? Uh, uh, I did, uh, at the end of the meeting yesterday, um, Melissa Bordelon's uh, staff said that Richard Nelson was coming to do a talk about that mm -hmm. at the next chamber meeting at the end of the month. So maybe we could find out about that and yeah. go to that. Yeah. And it's all it's all very much in flux yeah. too. So I mean, yeah. there's there's going to be some changes. But I know you still like yeah. refer the unfunded mandate being paid off. But then on the other hand, some people are saying it's going to get paid off in two years anyway. So you know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot to that. So I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. They announced that at the end of the meeting, Miss Dilly, if you could. That might be interesting for us to listen. Yeah, we definitely need to go to that. Anything else? Okay. There's no action on this agenda item. We'll move on to um, section 4A, which is to consider committee reports. We'll receive a motion at this time to approve the policy committee of the whole report dated October 1st, 2024. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Motion is made by Mr. Piazza. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Dominguez. Any discussion? on the motion. I don't have any public input on that particular agenda item. There's no discussion. We'll call the question and ask members to vote your devices. Voting is open. Yeah. 
Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. All right, we'll move on then to superintendent's reports and recommendations. First is a referral of policy GAL related to ethics uh, to our policy committee, Mr. McNeely. Uh, we recently had a GOSEP uh, desk audit, um, and one of the things that they recommended is that we add specific wording to our policy that says that we abide by the Louisiana State Board of Ethics. Like everything in there is their stuff, but we didn't have that <laughs> sentence. So uh, we will refer it to policy and add what GOSEP would like for us to add that we do follow state ethics, even though our policy clearly says that we. A motion to adopt the administration's recommendation. Right. Motion is to refer <laughs> to our policy committee policy GAL related to ethics. Motion is made by Mr. Piazza, seconded by Mrs. Dominguez. Any discussion? There's no discussion. There's no public input on this agenda item. We'll call the question. Ask members to vote your devices. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. All right, any other updates from you, Ms. Stilley? Okay. All right, next then we'll move to um, personal privilege. Um, we'll start down on the right this time. Mr. Dominguez, you have any board member comments? No comments today. Mr. Moore? No, no. Mr. Piazza? Good. Ms. Abrams? Just one quick thing. Although I don't work for TARC anymore, they are starting penny power next week in the school. So if your kids come home asking for pennies and quarters and dimes, <laughs> make sure that you give it to them so they can want a pizza party. Thank you. All right. Mr. Anthony? Yes, sir. Also, uh, real quick, just wanted to remind the board that Natalbany Middle is having their prayer breakfast this Friday at 9. And just a little extra reminder, I think I mentioned the last meeting, we are doing that fundraiser still, still to try to get some, um, raise some funds for the kids to get yearbooks. I think there's like 10 or 12 dates left, so y'all bring your wallets, please, if you show up. We're talking about like $10 or $8 or 9 so anyway, just come with a 20 We'll see what you got left when you leave. Thank you. Miss um, Richards? Mr. Uh, Ms. Jenkins reminded me I'm supposed to give a report about the, uh, the Louisiana State School Board Association Trailblazer we had last Friday at the Southern Hotel Conference Room and it was very well attended. I, I participated, we, we did policy updates and we, we learned a lot of things that's coming with the accountability system from the state, which is not very promising. Uh, there's a lot more details that uh, I'll share with y'all later. And I know you've been getting the emails from uh, Dr. Pope from LSBA. So it's pretty crucial that we keep up with the accountability issues that are happening uh, with the changes. And also this weekend we're, we're doing another type uh, conference in Natchitoches I'll be attending that so just wanted to uh, put that in for CLU's whatever I'm supposed to report on that Mr. Jenkins thank you for the reminder um, just some housekeeping issues for you guys um, number one the uh, we are going to try to get back on track with our DARC hearings so that we don't have so many all at once my, my goal is for us to have um, those each week uh, on the weeks that we have a regular school board meeting, we'll do them prior to our regular school board meeting. On the weeks that we do not have a school board meeting, I'm gonna, uh, at least for the rest of this year, I'd like for us to do those hearings at our alternative school campus in Hammond. Uh, so we'll be doing those on uh, those Tuesdays, okay? Um, the, um, the other thing, just as a housekeeping, you know, our goal traditionally has been that we try to only have one meeting, a uh, regular board meeting um, in the month of November and one in the month of December. Um, so as we're putting that calendar together, getting close to that November board meeting for the administration and for the board members, remember to get those agenda items in because and, and factor in the fact that we will, we're gonna try to only have one uh, regular board meeting in the month of November. November uh, and I think 12. we have that date, it's the 12th. November 12th. 12. Right. Uh, of course, if something happens and we've got to do a special meeting, then we will, but, but let's all try to, to plan accordingly. Um, okay, uh, as far as our litigation matters, I don't think 
we have anybody to talk to us about the Garners mm -hmm. and Scott versus Tangero Parish School System matter. Um, our attorney got the flu, uh, and I don't see where they ever sent us a packet or anything like that. Unless did they ask you to handle it? So we're removing that agenda item. On the matter of Joyce Marie Moore versus Tangero Parish School Board, um, the board should have received a written report from our attorney earlier today. Um, and I may be scheduling an opportunity, a special opportunity for us to talk about that as a board um, within the next 10 or 15 days. Um, but we don't have anything to take up on that tonight. Okay? Uh, so no action on that one and on Garner's, we're um, pulling that from the agenda. We do have three uh, general public input requests that uh, have been turned in. Uh, hopefully these folks were patient enough with us and stayed. I have Jonathan Laval, Dr. Jonathan Laval still here with us. Uh, and came all the way to us from Clinton, Louisiana to talk about our retirement system election that's coming up, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, President Duncan, Superintendent Stilley, and I'm gonna turn my little podium around to Dr. the folks who are still here. Um, my name is Jonathan Lovall. I have I've been an educator in East Feliciana Parish. So I've been a teacher and an administrator for the last 16 years. Um, I'm coming to, uh, to speak with you this evening to remind folks that there is a runoff election for the Teachers Retirement System of Louisiana, District 5. If you teach in Tangipahoa Parish, you are part of District 5. District 5 is a big district. It runs all the way from Union Parish at the Arkansas State Line all the way to down here um, in Tangipahoa Parish. I am a candidate for um, the Board of Trustees in that runoff election. Ballots will come to you in the mail October 18, and you'll have to turn those in by November 18. You can vote either by mail, um, by telephone, or online. And it's really important um, that folks participate in this election because we know that TRSL has a, such a huge impact on communities across Tangipahoa Parish, communities like mine in, in Clinton. Um, our retirement system is so essential for our communities and so essential for our educators. And so I'm running for the Board of Trustees because I believe that we need to have a strong and sustainable retirement system so that our educators um, can receive the retirement benefits that you have earned. And so I'm just here to learn more about um, the things happening in Tangipahoa Parish because you deserve a member of TRSL who will show up and listen and learn so that um, they can serve you better. Um, again, my name is Jonathan Lovall. Most important thing, that TRSL election, your ballots will come out um, October 18 and you need to get those turned in by November 18 and I just encourage you to cast a vote. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Thank you. Thank, thanks for being here. I've been on this board 14 years. I don't think I've ever had anyone <laughs> talk to us about that, the TRSL good. election. I don't get to vote in that, so I don't know who you're running against. But um, yes, but thank you for coming and, and giving us attention and, and being here. We appreciate it. Man. Thank you. Um, all right, next uh, general public input we have is Joseph Barbario. Joseph, did I say that right? Close enough? Well, I'll let you correct me. So. Um, all right. And Mr. Barbera, you have five minutes to do general public input, and, uh, um, and I see what you want to talk to us about. So, just Thank you. So my name is Joseph Barbario. Uh, I am the father of a little girl that received a death threat at Tangibahoa Parish School. Uh, last year, a mandatory reporting statute was updated. Uh, the revised statute states that any school employee who learns of a threat of violence or a threat of terrorism, whether through oral communication, written communication, or electronic communication, shall immediately report the threat to a local law enforcement agency, and if the employee is not the school administrator, to the school administrator. Upon being informed of the threat, the school administrator shall make reasonable efforts to attempt to inform all persons who are targets of the threat, and shall take all necessary measures to protect their lives and safety. The school administrator, next, shall make reasonable efforts to attempt to notify the appropriate personnel within the school district administration. The school administrator and the school district administrator, then, shall determine if risk is imminent for any other persons because of the threat, and if so, notify them and make reasonable efforts to attempt to take measures to protect their lives and safety. 
The school administrator and the school district administrator then shall determine whether to notify parents of the school or the students at the school. No person shall have a cause of action against any person for any action taken or statement made in adherence with the requirements for reporting as provided in this subpart. However, the immunity for liability provided in this subsection shall not apply to any action or statement if the action or statement was maliciously, willfully, or deliberately intended to cause harm to, harass, or to otherwise deceive law enforcement or school officials. Uh, this most recent revision was done so to just remove the word credible from that first paragraph. They did this to remove any sort of guesswork for the school administrators so that they have to report any sort of threat of violence to any student in their school as soon as they become aware of it, or any teacher even. Um, it does improve upon the former statute where the school administrator would have to decide what they wanted to do. I personally think it's not perfect. I would like to know any time my student is threatened if I was you know, involved in that. But the, it, the statute at least is better. Uh, the statute provides protections if parents are notified. Uh, the only time it wouldn't provide a protection is if they could prove it was done maliciously. If you notify parents every single time, it's hard to say it's done maliciously because you do it every single time. Um, personally, I would believe that we should have a policy that adds that on to the statute, but I think we should at least follow the statute. Now, I know for, for my incident, which you know, we're not going to discuss today, that was not followed until after I notified school district employees of the change to the statute. So I would like to know what are we doing to inform school administrators and teachers of this revision so that any sort of threat of violence they're forced to report? And I would like to know what criteria will be used to determine if a parent is to be notified. Uh, okay. that, that's the extent of my comment. Thank you, sir. Look, Thank you. Uh, and I, it's our general policy that we don't respond to, yeah, to no. public input in these meetings, but I will tell you that um, we did district-wide training on this type of thing yesterday. The, uh, on safety issues training and then this morning the superintendent sent out um, a memo district-wide um, that specifically talks about reporting um, and the mandatory reporting requirements uh, but but um, you'll get a, a follow-up letter from the superintendent too thank you okay thank you sir uh, next public input is um, I, I think I stated that correctly right your memo that went out was yeah related to yeah. that um, Emily Thrash, um, I believe, are you still here? Yes, ma'am. I just want to say thank you for allowing me some time to speak. My name is Emily Thrash. I'm a teacher here in Tangipahoa Parish. And on October 10th, last Thursday, I was the victim of an assault by a student. I was choked. I teach second grade. I teach seven and eight-year-olds. What was the school's response? Nothing. In fact, they acted as if it didn't happen. Not even a phone call home was given for the student. That child was back in my class today with no disciplinary actions taken against him. There is so much talk about the crisis we are in with the teacher shortage. But if teachers are being assaulted, what is the teacher shortage going to look like in the next five to 10 years? I have been told by administration to stop writing kids up for major behaviors, including putting their hands on one another because it looks bad on the disciplinary record. It starts here at the school board. There is so much pressure on schools to have little to no actions being taken against behavior, but at what cost? I am a first year teacher, and I certainly will not be a second year teacher, and likely won't finish my first year of teaching without changes. I am expected to go to work every day and put myself in harm's way for the education of our future. But what does that say about our future? We are letting children as young as seven and eight years old getting away with assaulting their teachers. We will release them into society. Are they gonna think that it's okay to assault people then? I did it in school, so it must be fine to do anywhere else. I say this to the school board. If these behaviors do not get handled, there will be no teachers in, our fu in the future and our future will be at stake because of it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I don't have any other um Public in, general public input request forms, um, and I don't think there's any additional coming in. All right, so there's been no other business to come before the board. This meeting is adjourned.